Metazone. Welcome back, everybody. You got Will and I, man, here from the Block Runner Metazone, Rovi and Scribe, and today we're going to be talking about Rune's Takeover. Man, look at that empty chair. It's very yeah. sad. <laughs> uh, so we're doing a COVID edition. Someone, someone decided to get sick, so uh, yeah. we're trying to play it safe. And That's uh, right. but nonetheless, playing it safe. That's not how you uh, get entertainment value. You got to take risks, right? As we have been, dude. It's been a very risky weekend. So <laughs> it, it would have been nice if we could have recorded this yesterday. Okay. But I was sick and it was the weekend, so we don't typically do that. But yeah, something's been happening. They're called gobs. Mm. And they're asking everyone to take absolute risks. So by the time this video is out, I think, you know, we will have missed day one. Yeah. Of the, of the risk, the risk taking, whatever. Yeah. But nonetheless, it's still a, a very active thing happening, and uh, it's interesting to talk about. Nonetheless, we don't we don't speculate on this channel, anyways, right? We're just looking for entertainment. That's right. Yeah. So the first day was on Sunday, right? Yesterday. Is that yeah, yesterday. Okay. Yeah. So we'll get into that. It's on the long list of things, but ultimately, what we're trying to talk about here is runes, right? Again. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's yeah. take a look at the first tweet yeah. here by Jason Fang. And uh, so we just did an interview with him. Uh, it's out, yes, on Saturday. Um, so take yeah. a look at it. People have enjoyed that interview. Jason, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, but the first tweet here says, what is alpha when you're invested in more than 30 companies in Bitcoin L1 and half of them are looking to launch their token on runes? So Jason, say what? Yeah. Say that again? No, I just found this interesting because if you don't remember, this is one of the things he kind of like, we had like a nice 30 minute conversation with him yeah. off camera. And this is like one of the things he told us is like, yeah, like half of his portfolio companies are looking into rune deployments. And I was like, holy shit, that's actually a big fucking deal. But now he's, he's public now with this information. So now everybody's aware, right? Yeah. Which is like, I feel like another beacon has been lit. You know, we got to really start paying attention to this. Yeah, I feel like uh, the sentiment right now, everyone's focusing on runes. And so I think it was kicked off with like Arsic, and now everyone's coming out with their own like implementation and their own style of mining runes. And um, so so now uh, a lot of these companies are launching their rune strategy. And we got about less than 30 days before the, uh, the happening, which is when runes is actually activated. So, yeah. so yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So let's move on to the next one here. So we have an article here that says understanding Bitcoin's layer one's runes protocol. So this is on gate IO and, uh, this is a pretty solid breakdown of like what runes is and like where it came from and why it exists and some examples here, like the Arsic. Um, and so this is this is probably like the best place to start if you're kind of new new to runes and this whole whole thing that's going to be launching in about 30 days but but yeah this is a good place yeah, yeah so to your understanding do you like <clears throat> do you understand what runes are just if you can quickly yeah like a technical standpoint like what why do we we it seems like we've been covering fungible token standards all year like different variations you know whether they're native to ordinals or not so like, why do we need another one? Is this yeah. actually going to change anything from like a developer standpoint? Like, what do you think? So we've seen flavors of runes already in existence. And all it is, is the previous fungible tokens, the, the dominant ones on Bitcoin have relied on this account based um, structure. And what that means is whenever you mint a BRC20, for example, or a tap token, uh, you mint it to yourself, right? It ends up in your wallet and the indexers basically assign a token balance to your wallet address. And sure. you, so that min inscription in your wallet, you can send it to somebody else and nothing really changes your balance, right? So uh, the way that this works is you have to inscribe a new inscription called a transfer inscription, and you decide how many of those tokens in your account balance that you want to send out. And that's how you move these fungible token balances uh, to other people, right? So by inscribing these transfer inscriptions. So how is that different than runes? So runes ties a fungible balance to a UTXO, right? And if you don't know what a UTXO is, definitely look it up, but it's an unspent transaction output for Bitcoin. And so these yeah. little, these, these little uh, UTXOs is basically an envelope of data 
and that envelope contains the runes balance, right? And so basically you send that UTXO to somebody and then that's how you transfer a, a, a runes token to somebody else. So you don't have to create transfer inscriptions. It's a little bit more efficient and uh, it's probably, it, you're basically moving Bitcoin, right? It's just that Bitcoin has an assigned runes balance. Correct. Okay, so it introduces efficiencies and much better user-friendly experience, something that people, I guess, are more yeah. typically used to, like in other fungible tokens on Ethereum or yeah. Solana or whatever. But the big thing is this, uh, I think the push that comes along with this, for one, because it's Casey, the guy who invented Ordinals itself, which is clearly like the winning protocol standard for Bitcoin. Like it's it's what started all of this. It's what started our whole year of like exploration right into this space so mm -hmm. the fact that that same entity that same force that same human that individual like he has that gravitas right and he's he has an interpretation of how fungible tokens should operate on bitcoin so that's really what's that's all the technicals aside that's really the most important i think factor here mm -hmm. it's, it's it's simply that it's just the man behind the narrative right it's going to attract a lot of attention yeah a lot of vc interest a lot of market activity right so there's already we're like a few weeks away from that so people are exploring with these pre rune distribution mechanisms and stuff so yeah i mean i think we're like in full preparation mode at least i am mentally like just to kind of observe this like casey rodimer show right yeah. i don't know how long it's going to last there's lots of speculation in the air as far as like how how technical or how um functional this token environment can become right because yeah. ultimately that's going to determine its longevity right whether you can actually build real uh i guess usefulness real uh outside ecosystems with these types of tokens yeah real utility so, outside of like the the meme meme ability of a of a token right so so yeah the question is how do you prepare for this right the happening is what about three to four weeks away yeah roughly yeah, so, so what do you do if you're like a total noob? Maybe you missed all of BRC20s, you missed all of Ordinals. You're like, damn, dude, I missed all the fun. You're hearing about this rune stuff. Like, well, you know, what are your options as far as preparations or how should you determine your involvement? That's kind of like what we're going to talk about here. Yeah. So, yeah, so that, yeah. that's going to be the main takeaway. And uh, over the, was it over the weekend or maybe, no, it was actually Wednesday. They had a coding club. And CB Spears, Rotomore, and Raftjaff were there kind of hosting it. And uh, it was like a three or four hour, like, you know, event of like going into the details on launching a, a runes token. So, yeah. uh, so we have a link here that kind of goes through and summarizes everything there. Um, but some of the opportunities here uh, is we mentioned earlier Arsic and Runestones. So Runestones was, was a thing airdropped uh, to everyone who had at least three ordinal inscriptions in your wallet. And you had the, and you received this uh, 3D model of like a rock, basically, uh, with an icon on on it. And this is sort of like a kind of like a lightning rod for other projects to drop runes, um, yeah. runes mining mechanisms right to your wallet. Correct. And I think we've seen this in effect to a certain extent with some of these airdrops recently, right? Yeah, we've seen like at least ten, if not more, announcements of some sort of airdrop to come to runestone holders, but I don't think many have actually executed. Yeah, correct. If you're actually going to try and do like a, a, an umbrella airdrop to the holder base, I mean, that's a very expensive endeavor, right? Yeah, it's like a couple hundred grand. <laughs> yeah, right. So it kind of makes sense why the execution is kind of falling laps to uh, the sentiment, Yeah. right? But nonetheless, it's still probably one of the most passive approaches to getting involved, right? Just acquire one of these runestones if you haven't, and you just simply hold it right and then whether these teams can actually execute on their uh their allocations most likely you won't have to do much and I, we encourage you not to actually engage with anybody who's claiming that you should right because yeah. most likely it's some some type of nefarious activity yeah right? and you know we we're talking about airdropping and how expensive that is on bitcoin so what you're going to see is a lot of websites spawning and say hey connect your wallet um, and, and, you know, claim your, your, you know, miner or whatever it is for runes. Yeah. And yeah. you have to be careful because if you do that and you sign the wrong transaction, you can get mm -hmm. your entire funds compromised. 
Um, so yeah. there's going to be an additional link that kind of walks through like a scenario where this actually has happened. Um, I don't know if you saw it, I man, but uh, I'll link it to you a little bit later. But yeah, this this link just kind of describes that there's a a Bitcoin signature that allows you to drain all the funds mm. in that wallet, and if you sign it, everything's gone. Lame, super lame. Yeah, <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> but that is something to look out for. You know, people are really good at getting, uh, you know, painting blue skies and making, you know, to drum up that feeling of FOMO. It's like, I have to click on this link or else I'm going to stay poor forever. Yeah, let me, right? let me see if I can actually pull it up here because it is important. Yeah, um, yeah, it's just a PSA because, you know, there's going to be a lot of that, right? Um, there's a lot of people, predators out there who like to prey on, you know, the unsuspected of the crowd. So nonetheless, RuneStone is a legitimate initiative. Um, they're out there, they're on Magic Eden, you can acquire one and uh, they will, you know, allocate you some Rune token at some point in the future, simply by holding it. So that's the passive route. A much more active route would be some, some of these like minor um, RSIC mechanism type ordinals, right? Yeah. Where you have to at least like send them to yourself or to another wallet that kind of gets like a mining Correct. operation be started. Yeah. yeah. And that, that is the, you had to do that. If you received an RSIC, you had to send it yourself. There was something else. I think, uh, I think it was gobs or something else where you had to do that as well. Uh, but here's that mm -hmm. tweet that I was talking about. I man, there's basically three types of transaction, uh, signatures that you have to sign. There's the SIG hash, all SIG hash, single and SIG hash, none. So basically, if you go to a website and you sign a SIG hash none, it says basically you're saying, I'll send you the money and I don't want to enforce anything in return, right? That is what that signature represents. So basically, it's like I will pay a mining fee to acquire this or claim this asset, but you you pay that and then you, you get nothing in return. And then you're signing this transaction drains all your funds. Damn. Yeah. So, yeah, I definitely know somebody who must have done one of those. Yeah. <laughs> recently. <laughs> yeah. And there's people um have have actually fallen for this. So um yeah. <clears throat> the good news is there's a uh Xverse wallet has implemented like a like a warning for these types of signature transactions. So hopefully Unisad and Leather kind of update, but but yeah, just a PSA. So moving on with yeah. runes, we got uh color boost mechanics here. It says common is 5%, rare is 10%, and rainbow is 25%. So this is just yeah, another, yeah. another... Another... These are the totems, right? So like they have different gamification mechanisms, and they're all different. Even though they're all kind of like the same as far as like uh, end game motivations, it's to, it's to distribute rune tokens, right? But how they do it, they have their own different flavors and such. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're still kind of like really... You're, you're hoping and praying that these teams actually do deploy that token yeah. at the end of the day, which it's a risk we're all taking. Right. So this is why, you know, you have multiple options here. You could, you could choose to do nothing, not participate in any of this pre rune stuff. Right. The viable option, right. You could just be an outside observer. That's going to be mostly my position. Just kind of like see how all this unfolds. Uh, you could spend your time the next month or so studying like, you know, the purpose of fungible tokens, independent of runes right fungible tokens are not new to crypto they've been around since 2014 20 even earlier probably yeah right so like what is the purpose of them what what can they do what are some p possible use cases you might see emerge from this runes ecosystem so mm -hmm. if you're totally new to this space it's a good idea to equip yourself with that knowledge right because you're going to see rune project founders uh, pitch to you the 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 vision of like a DeFi ecosystem built on runes yeah uh, a metaverse ecosystem built on runes, a game five block X, Y, and Z, right? Yeah. It's going to happen. So familiarize yourself with like how these ecosystems actually work and function in order to like, kind of like see through the bullshit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. Option three is to actually participate in these pre rune mechanisms. Yeah. So. Which comes with its own risks, right? Yeah. Um, so there's another one. So there's, uh, if you were wondering, it's like, is DMT going to play a role in like this whole runes thing? Well, it's actively playing a role at the moment with terabits. And, yeah. um, so yeah, there's an angle here where you can mine our, our rune stone or rune stone, where you can mine runes using, mm -hmm. uh, the terabits assets. Um, so yeah. the, the get book will be in the link, link in the description and, uh, the details, uh, for their runes allocation is here as well. 
Yeah, so this one I think leverages a concept called non-arbitrary spaces, right? Yeah. To kind of like render these little resource environments. <laughs> and then from that, you could derive some sort of a variable or factor that 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 determines your rune allocation mm -hmm. rate. Right. Yeah. So that's what makes each of them unique. It is very interesting. A lot of it is it's it's the reason why it's classified as a DMT runes initiative is because they're 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 rooting uh, on chain data as like these uh these components to render these different variables right yeah, yeah. a distribution mechanism but as far as like the actual non-arbitrary tokens like there there is no actual uh framework yet at least like the dmt framework hasn't been uh, adapted to runes as Correct. of yet Right. Yeah. And so this is something we're actively investigating just to see, you know, what, what we can do. And the most interesting thing from uh, from our perspective on runes is the fact that it's like a new tool that we can play with. Right. Something mm -hmm. that we can sort of uh, use to come up with like new stuff. Right. And so I think that's the valuable thing about runes. Yeah, I All think right. for sure. There's, we're, I think there could definitely be some interplay between the two. Yeah. Uh, for sure, like, you know, large percentage of the mechanisms that enable, you know, non-arbitrary tokens to proliferate, it's all native to, like, already existing ordinals technology. So the fact that this fungible token standard is going to, it's going to play along with ordinals very well based on what yeah. Casey Rodimer said. So for sure, there should be some way to, like, uh, intertwine the two protocols to kind of, like, produce uh, non-arbitrariness, I guess, into that fungible token space. Yeah. That's just... But unverified, but like you said, we're, we're, uh, yeah, the theory is there. Exploring. Like, yeah, yeah we got to come right. up with a theory and say, Hey, maybe we can do something here. And so we got to investigate. So, um, mm -hmm. another one here, it's called Rune Mania Minor. It, they, here's the operational guidelines. So, this is another one. Um, yeah. so clearly, as you can tell, there's a lot of these projects that have come up with like a distribution mechanism, and all of them are, are different. And so yeah. if you're inclined to participate in this degree of entertainment, there's a lot of stuff to get into, right? And all this stuff is completely unique from each other. Yeah. Yeah, another rabbit hole, if you will. Yeah, that, yeah exactly. It's, it's pretty cool. Like, they, they, they look cool. Like, there's definitely, like, an aesthetic and, like, a brand to runes already, right? Yeah. Very mythical, very, like, uh, I don't know, spin off of, like, What's that game people used to like where like people were getting shot in the knees with arrows? What? what was it called? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm getting shot It's in like the uh, knees? Elden Ring or something like that. Or uh fucking <laughs> god damn it. You know what I'm talking about, dude. Negative. Uh okay, whatever. It, it looks like a fantasy MMO. Like yeah. the the branding of it all. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, maybe you don't know, dude, because you you don't come from that world. You know what I no, mean? No, I only play first person <laughs> shooters, dude. I'm not shooting <laughs> arrows out here. I'm shooting ammunition you're shooting grenades yeah dude all right so there's another one so this is called the rune guardian man they went uh all out on this this yeah, website here yeah so this is just another uh just here it is allocation so partaking our massive what is that 100 billion rune airdrop man this is crazy dude i know dude it's a whole world out there and this is just the beginning because there's still like three to four weeks of uh, new projects that can enter into this foray of uh, experimentation, you know? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, so this is interesting. Um, how the hell do you find all this, I-Man? Dude, what do you mean? Like, Are you new? Uh, on, all on Twitter? <laughs> this is what I do. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here's another one, RuneX. The new runes meta is here. It says RuneX created the first pre-rune token, starting to uh, starting a trend that consumed the ordinal space. And uh, some of you have already received this uh, golden box here. Yeah, a while ago. Yeah. yeah was, RuneX has been talking about, you know, their participation in this uh, pre-rune distribution process probably before most of these projects. So yeah, yeah, this one's probably another like, as far as I know, it's very passive. Like if you have one of these. I don't think there's much you need to do as far as like uh, actually receiving your allocation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is, is good. this is yeah this is a very simplistic one which is is fine right that's the first one the early ones are going to be very simplistic and then it's going to get more complex. So speaking of complex, 
Uh, some yeah. of you have already received one of these Game of Blocks gobs in uh, your wallet. So this happened uh, between Thursday or Friday, and it just like yeah. kind of showed up. And then if you look in, into the inscription, it sort of like a, gives you some breadcrumbs on how to figure out like what the rules are. And it takes you to another inscription and then finally takes you to this uh, Twitter link. And yeah. so we have like a, another gaming mechanism. It, it's not clear that this is runes related, but it's very much set up similarly to like a runes allocation mechanism. Yeah, we're definitely speculating here. This is not, um, yeah, this like is... you said, it's definitely not been clarified from their behalf. But yeah, this is for sure some sort of a rune distribution scheme. Yeah. But it has all the ingredients of such. Yeah, right? I mean, this could be just a game of itself of like a like a PFP project because you see little characters here, these little squares, right? They all could be their own yeah. unique asset. Uh, but yeah, there's there's like a risk element, and then there's a chance that you you end up dying, and then um, yeah. not not in real life, just in the in the game of blocks here. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, there's very specific rules for this. So this is like three phases, I believe, now that have been publicized. But that's what we we're talking about when we first started is it would have been nice if we could have made this video a day before because by the time this video goes out, day one will have been completed yeah. to phase one, which is the riskiest of stages. Basically, you had a 1% chance to actually not die yeah. if you uh, reinscribed your gob inscription. Yeah. Right? Uh, so there's like a 1% chance that it does not split. It stays frozen into that phase therefore yeah. you have like one of the highest like most rare grail gobs yeah. possible right and the 99 right. chance it just dies and it becomes like a rendered useless inscription yeah correct right so this is be broken down into phases every single day here on out the risk uh, profile is dynamic it becomes less risky over time but the value of those frozen assets we get you know decreases over time as well yeah so it's interesting, like you said, it's a, it's a weird little game they're doing. Um, they're forcing everyone to become like familiarized with reinscription, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I feel like most people lost their V card. Yeah. <laughs> so that, you know, it's like, oh, damn, I've never reinscribed anything in my life. So That's it's right. pretty cool. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so, like you were saying, there's uh, phase one was on Friday, now phase two. Uh, here are the rules yeah. for phase two. And then there's going to be a phase three. And there could be more. But as far as I can tell, there's only up to phase three. So. Yeah, and if you scroll down right there, that chart you were just looking at. Uh, uh, sorry, hold on. Below that, even. This one. Yeah, there's a mime yield here. This is what makes it pretty obvious. It's, it's Clearly, it's a fungible token uh, allocation mechanism, right? So it's like, depending on where your, your gob gets frozen in this tier list, it's going to determine your mime yield, right? Yeah. So feels a lot like Arsic. Feels a lot like all these like pre-rune token assets so i'm assuming the mime token itself would be some kind of rune but maybe not because isn't there like a rule to like the actual character limits of a rune token yeah so i think it starts with like 27 characters or something like that and and then it and then it <laughs> decreases over time yeah so mime is clearly not going to fit within the rune token like nomenclature yeah uh, limitations so uh, maybe they'll change it. I don't know. But nonetheless, they haven't been very clear as far as like what this yield allocation is for. I feel like it would be a pretty big misstep not to have it be a rune token at this point, just because that's where the market's head is. Yeah. Right. So it's like, do you know, create this interesting game, get everybody their their assets, basically their their rune allocation devices, and then just get everyone ready and hyped up for the actual deployment of the token. That's you know, right. It seems that's like right. a no-brainer to me, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this is kind of straightforward in terms of like our our predictions on whether or not this is supporting runes. It could be, it could also not be. So uh, yeah. I guess we'll have to find out in phase three, which is not too long from now. Yeah. But yeah, that's it for us. I mean, we covered as much as we could find as far as runes and mm -hmm. uh, the different mechanisms that, that are out there that are released. Uh, let us know if we miss anything, right? There's probably a lot more out there that we haven't seen yet. And if you find it, definitely shoot it our way. And uh, again, all the links will be in the description. I appreciate you guys from watching, and we will catch you in the next video. Peace.